grace, God. Lord, Father God, when we, Father God, were lost and undone without you, God. Lord, Father, when we were nothing, Father, Lord, you saw something within us. And God, I thank you, Lord, for your saving grace. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy, God, you bestowed upon us. And to you be all glory, all honor, and all praise in this day. In Jesus' name.
here this morning. Luke chapter number one. Amen. Appreciate Brother Jerry for having it up on the screen. If you don't have your mind, we can follow along with us. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Heavenly Father, I love you, God, this morning. Lord, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here at the Murphy Church of God today. And God, I thank you, Father, Lord, for the opportunity to preach your gospel. And Father, I ask now, God, that you would anoint your servant, God. Lord, that you would touch me, Lord, from the top of my head, Father, to the sole of my feet. Anoint these lips of clay, God, that they could speak the oracles of God. Anoint the ears of those that are here, God, that they would hear the Word of God. Lord, that they'd hide it in their heart, Father. And Father, God, every lip, God, will give you praise today. And to you be all glory and all honor. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen and amen. You can be seated here this morning. As we go into the Word of God in this Christmas season, I told you I was wanting to preach unto you over the next five Sundays for things that we can recognize around the Nativity or the characters of the Nativity and what we can learn there. And any time we think about Bethlehem and we think of the Christmas story, we always go into the Gospel according to Luke. Many of you, you may have a Christmas tradition around your homes of sitting down and reading the Christmas story out of the Gospel of Luke. And if you look at Luke chapter number 1, these verses that I read unto you, Luke said he writes this to give you the perfect order of the Word of God. May I tell you there is order to God's Word. There is a things that have to happen first, things that have to happen second, things that have to happen third. And Luke wanted to give a proper order unto the Word of God concerning the things of Christ. And in order for us to get to Bethlehem, first we have to know that there was a forerunner, amen, a forerunner that had to come before Jesus Christ, and his name was John. We see in verse number 5, it said there, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abi, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they both, both were now well stricken in years. We know that there would be a forerunner of Christ. We know him as John the Baptist. But Luke felt it very important. Before I can tell you the story of Bethlehem, before I can tell you about the shepherds, before I can tell you about the angels, before I can tell you about the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, I have to tell you the story of John the Baptist. And this is the story of John the Baptist. His father's name was Zacharias. His mother's name was Elizabeth. She was of the lineage of Aaron. She come from the lineage of the priest. It was a godly order in her home. They were both righteous. They were more than righteous. The Word of God said that they were blameless before the Lord. Brother Peel, how would it like to be in your old age to stand before God and be blameless before God? Oh, we can say that here today because we're under grace. I'm talking about a man and a woman that lived before grace, before Jesus Christ was ever born, they were righteous and blameless before God. And her womb was barren. Zacharias, he had to offer them on the altar of incense unto the Lord. 
He went in one day as he goes to put that incense upon the altar. The people are praying in the temple. Zechariah goes in, standing at the right hand of the altar is the angel of God. Wow. Wow. I mean, walk in and look, and there's the angel. Brother Luther, when you come into the house of God this morning, you meet me here. Did you see an angel standing up here? Of all the times I've come in and I've made that corner through those doors to turn the lights on to come, I'm yet to see an angel. I'm not saying they're not one, because I believe angels in camp around about us that believe. But I've not seen a physical manifestation. Zechariah saw a physical manifestation of the angel Gabriel at the right hand of the altar of God. That angel gave him a promise that he was going to have a son and that he was going to call his name John. And Zechariah said, how can I know that this thing is going to be so? I got a wife at home. She's old. Are you hearing me? Let's think about it in the flesh. She's beyond the age of giving children, I believe. She's been barren all of these years. I just don't know if she can conceive a child or not. The angel said, you're going to have a son. You're going to call his name John. He's going to be a forerunner of the Christ. He's going to preach, amen, the Word of God. And this is going to be the sign unto you. You're not going to be able to speak. My goodness, Brother Bill, to have news like that and you can't tell nobody. And when he come out, the people were looking at him because he tarried long in there at the altar. And he was making all kinds of gestures. He was moving his lips, but nothing was coming out. And they perceived that he had seen a vision from God. They knew he'd been in the presence of the Lord. May I tell you, when he got home, he didn't have Facebook, he didn't have Twitter, he didn't have Instagram, Snapchat, telephone, or anything else. Elizabeth had no idea the story he had to tell when he got home. And he got home and he couldn't even tell it to her sister Nikki. But I believe he found a piece of parchment and a pen. And I believe he wrote down the story, my God. Some of you got some stories you need to write down. What are you talking about, Pastor? God's done great things in your life. You've told them to your children. You've told them to your grandchildren. But the day may come that they may forget. Maybe you need to pick up a diary or pick up a notepad and write down some of the things God's done in your life that maybe your great-grandchildren one day can pick up and see the faith that Mama had, see the faith that Grandpa had, and be blessed in the Spirit and the Word of God. I believe mean, he wrote down the story about the angel. And I'll tell you, Elizabeth got a hold of that and the Word of God said she conceived. And then she hid herself five months. When my wife conceived, she felt like hiding herself for nine months because she was sick from day one to the day Gracie come along. When Elijah come home, she got sugar. And she was sick with sugar till the day Elijah was born. Then the diabetes went away. Elizabeth hid herself five months. Nobody knew that she was pregnant. To see, there was a promise unto Zechariah. Your son shall be filled with the Holy Ghost while he's yet in his mother's womb. I don't read nowhere in the Word of God where John the Baptist was at the stable when Jesus was born. We don't have no figurine of Zechariah and Elizabeth that we put in our nativity. I told you I come to preach about the characters of the nativity. I didn't come this morning to preach to you about John the Baptist. I come to preach to you about the Holy Ghost, my God. He's the one we don't have a symbol of around the nativity. But may I tell you, he is all of the nativity, all around the nativity. I owe the angel of God coming to Mary and said, You're going to bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. And she said, How can this be seen? I know not a man. 
coming. He said the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And you're going to conceive of the Holy Ghost. My God, the Holy Ghost come upon her. She ran to her cousin Elizabeth. Why? Because the angel said, this is going to be so because your cousin Elizabeth, who was barren, she's carrying child. Elizabeth made haste to go to that woman that had been in hiding for five months. But when she beat on the door and she come in, the Lord of God said that baby leaped in Elizabeth's womb. Why did he leap? He leaped because he got filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. Why? Because Mary was carrying the Christ child inside of her. Are you carrying Christ inside of you today? Are you carrying the Holy Ghost inside of you today? When you go to visit somebody, are they leaping because the Spirit of God's moving upon them? The saints of God, we need to be walking in the Spirit. We need to be talking in the Spirit. We need to be carrying the Spirit of God everywhere we go. When Mary showed up, the baby leaped, filled with the Holy Ghost. And Brother Bill, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she began to prophesy that the mother of her Lord had just come in. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost showed up. When we want to look at the nativity, we've got to remember we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And what the Holy Ghost brought in her, what the Holy Ghost had birthed in Mary, she brought it forth. She wrapped it in swaddling clothes. And she laid it in a manger. The angels rejoiced. The shepherds bowed down. And then some years later, the wise man brought gifts unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Holy Ghost was all around the Nativity. The Holy Ghost showed up when Jesus was baptized with John in a Jordan River. He abode upon the Christ. The Holy Ghost showed up in Acts chapter number 2 when the day of Pentecost was fully come and they were in one place in one accord and there came a sound from heaven as a Russian mighty wind that filled all the house where they were assembled and there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire that set upon each of them. And they were all baptized with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. I'm telling you this December, this Christmas season, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, let us remember it was the working of the Spirit of God. It was the working of the Holy Ghost to bring forth that child into this world. The Holy Ghost is still active today. I want the Holy Ghost active in me. I want to be leaping for joy of the Holy Ghost within me. I want to be like Elizabeth. I want to prophesy unto the Lord, Brother Mark, as I'm moved upon by the Holy Ghost of God. I want to preach the Word as John preached the Word of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They said, listen, people coming to John to hear him, was it coming because he was clothed with camel hair? Was it coming because he had a leather girdle upon him? Was they coming to this man because he eat grasshoppers and wild honey? No. That's not the reason they come. But it said they came because he preached the word under the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. And men and women's hearts were convicted that they went in a Jordan River to be baptized this Christmas season. Let's preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. This Christmas season, let's sing our Christmas carols. Come on. Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Sister Bradshaw, you can turn me down just a little bit, Brother Jerry. I'm probably blasting everybody out. I've learned something about you. 
You know what it is? You're scared to ask, ain't you? Almost. I've heard you like to cook. Sorry. But if you don't like it, you sure will do a good job at it. And from what I've seen, I just about would think you probably make Christmas candies and Christmas food. I might be wrong. Am I wrong, Brother Bernie, or she makes stuff like that? Cookies and candies, yeah. And you give it out with joy. You do it that others can enjoy. Because it's the joy of the Lord working in you that you can prepare that and other people can enjoy Christmas. May I tell you, Sister Perkin or Sister Shirley, <laughs> I pray that when you're in the kitchen, when you're in the oven getting those cookies out, I want the joy of the Holy Ghost to flood your heart this Christmas season and flood your heart that everybody know that you've been touched by the power of God. I would, Sister Diane, when you're going and you're telling your family Merry Christmas, that the Holy Ghost bubbles up within you, that the joy of the Lord comes out, that everybody will recognize, hey, Mama's filled with the Holy Ghost. Mama's operating under the power of the Spirit. Let's not forget the Holy Ghost this Christmas season. Sister B.J., let's get a dove and hang with the nativity. Oh, Pastor, what you talking about? Come on. We've got the camels. We've got the cows. We've got the sheep. We've got the shepherd. We've even got them wise men that wasn't there. We got the beautiful star of Bethlehem. I believe I've told you this morning we can hang the dove. My God, we can hang the dove in the nativity. But sister, before just hanging the dove, I want the dove to abide upon me everywhere I go this Christmas season when everybody's in the hustle and the bustle, when all them people on Friday were knocking each other down to buy something. Let us walk in in the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost and say the name unto you was born this day in the city of David, the Savior which is Christ the Lord. When we walk through the Christmas parade next Saturday and we give them that piece of paper that says unto you was born Born in the city of David, the Savior that is Christ the Lord. Let's do it under the ocean and the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God that people can see the real meaning of what Christmas is all about. Because it could be this very Christmas that the dove takes his flight. Oh, did you hear me? It could be this Christmas that the dove takes his flight back home. And I want to go. I want to go. Don't you want to go? I know that any girl will shut that thing with me all over this house. Father God, as we celebrate this Christmas season, as we celebrate the nativity, Father God, we take into account the working of the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you, Lord God, that the Holy Ghost moved on Zacharias. We thank you, Lord God, that when he wrote his name was John, that the Holy Ghost moved upon Zacharias, and he also began to prophesy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, when we look at the high priest when he come to dedicate Jesus Christ and Anna, how that the Holy Ghost moved on them. Father, we remember, Father God, that you are God the Father, you are God the Son, and you are God the Holy Ghost this Christmas season. And Father God, I ask God that you pour out your Spirit on the Murphy Church of God. Lord, that the Holy Ghost, God, would stir within every heart, within every soul this Christmas season, and we would glorify the name of Jesus forever. And to you be all glory and all honor and all praise. In Jesus' name, look unto me right now. Listen, what is the Holy Ghost's primary purpose? Was His primary purpose just to come and be in the womb of Mary to bring forth Jesus Christ? Was His primary purpose to baptize John? The Holy Ghost has one purpose. His purpose is to lift up and exalt the name of Jesus Christ. My God, let the Holy Ghost move in me this Christmas season. That above all things, I glorify Brother Seth the name of Jesus. I exalt the name of Jesus. You're here this morning. And you say, more than anything I want this Christmas, I want to exalt 
the name of Jesus Christ. I want to praise the name of Jesus Christ. If that's your desire, will you join me around this altar this morning? And will you lift your hands to heaven this morning? And will you ask God, God, help me exalt the name of Jesus. Lord, let the Holy Ghost move upon me this Christmas season that I can glorify the name of Jesus, that I can witness for Christ this year. Heavenly Father, God, as we assemble around this altar, God, Lord, this Christmas season, God, we want to exalt that wonderful name of Jesus. He's no longer a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, but He's a soon coming King, sitting down at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me today, and I want to exalt His name. 